Emergency! Emergency! Smurf emergency! Smurf emergency! Hello, my friends! So, recently, well, not really recently, this was like two years ago, I made a video making fun of this really bad Smurfs fanfiction. I had a lot of, like, baby torture and stuff, and I don't really want to talk about that right now. Mm. -mm. I don't really want to talk about it right now. But, anyway. So recently that video has been getting a lot of attention, and um, I got a comment from someone who goes by Shipper of Heart about this one particular character who we encountered when we were reading that story. You know, Vic George 2010? Remember Vic George? Now baby is truly naked, says Vic George 2010. Hey Vic. Can you fuck off, Vic? Can you leave? Can you stop? Please? Remember that guy? So it turns out that Vic George 2010 has his own website. And it is amazing. As you can see in the background behind me, this looks like a website that somebody made back in, um, hmm, 1999, maybe? Probably, probably earlier than that, honestly. It brings me back to all those Angel Fire anime fan pages that I used to visit when I was a kid. Man, I just had tons of bookmarks of those. But this man has a website, and I believe, I don't, I'm not sure how long he's had it. The earliest date that I saw was something like 2000 or something like that? I'm not sure. I'll need to double check. This website has been around for a long time and I believe that it's still being updated. Like I'm pretty sure that this image is for Easter of this year. I, I don't think it's from like 2009 or something. It's the real year. <laughs> because 2009 wasn't a real year, of course. Only 2022 is the real year. I thought that it would be kind of fun to go through Vic George's masterpiece of a website and just kind of see what sort of gems are awaiting us here in the pages of Vic George's deep, dark mind. Don't worry, this this really won't be anything like the Smurf in Hand story. I looked through this place a little bit and it's not nearly as gross as that. It's, it's just like a weird old guy who was really into the Smurfs, or is really into the Smurfs? If he's still alive, who knows if he is. But we're gonna take a look at all of his wonderful fan fiction, his fan art, his poetry, his his little fan page of the Left Behind book series, his his music list, his his video games list. Boy, this really takes me back to like a very early era of the internet where people just made websites like this. Because because they thought that people cared. Oh boy. Okay, so let's get started. We'll start off with this amazing, wonderful Easter image. Sin has made God look at us in this color. But when God looked upon the one who would bear the sins of the many in this color, he could now look at us in this color. So Sin makes you navy blue, and then Jesus is red, and then everybody else is white, and uh, okay, okay. Welcome to my website. I don't, I'm not sure if that's Comic Sans. It looks very similar to it, but it might be something different. It is now 12.24 a.m. on Monday, May 2nd, 2022. Oof. This website, website really calling me out for how late I'm up reading this Smurf website. This website has been devoted to the showcasing of some of my talents and interests. Some with original ideas, and some based on one of my favorite cartoon characters. I'm trying to keep this site as PG-rated as possible. PG-rated as possible. That's a good sign. I hope... I really, really hope that it stays that way. So there's something for everyone of every age. The material on this site will change from time to time, so visit me as often as you can. Let's take a look at the artworks first. Oh, okay. Okay. Right off the bat. I think that this might be official smurf art from the comic strips or something. And he just like colored it in and put his OC in there. 
Smurfette, what the Smurf has gotten into you? Smurfing goodbye to my old wardrobe, Papa Smurf. Oh yeah, that's another thing. He's he's really into Smurfette for some reason. Okay, I know exactly what the reason is, but it's it's not fun to think about that. I don't I don't really want to think about why he finds Smurfette sexy. But what was wrong with her old outfit? It was just like a plain white dress. I guess he couldn't he couldn't think about that hot, hot Smurf midriff when she's wearing a white dress. I always feel so safe and warm when I'm smurfing with my big blue teddy bear. I don't know what's happening here. There's there's a hyper-realistic PNG of a bottle full of sand and some 3D models terrorizing a young child. This man is shooting a Photoshop lens flare out of his forehead. Mm. I don't really want to think about what he's doing to Smurf out there either. Hey, Mr. DJ, Smurf a record on. I want to Smurf with my baby. The whole Smurf baby talk thing for different verbs doesn't feel very well thought out. It's all downhill from here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call foreshadowing. Empath has smurfed back to Psychelia, my little Smurfs, but we will not forget him. This statue is a reminder that he will smurf back to us for good when he is as tall as this figure in another 79 years, and then we shall be smurfed free. I don't, I don't understand what any of those words meant. And here we see the elusive smurf kaiju terrorizing the coasts of Japan, destroying everything in their path. Okay, so the way this website is designed is god-awful. He's worse than the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. He's Smurfzilla. Be very afraid, he's out to collect humans! I was joking about that kaiju thing, but I guess he really does have, like, a Smurfzilla joke. Okay, watch out for son of Smurfzilla crawling his way to your town. Oh, dollies. How do you think this man is feeling about this? This man just happened to be in the foreground of this picture, and now, many, many years later, he has been immortalized as the guy in front of this weird picture of a Smurf baby that this weirdo on the internet is making art out of. Last year, a giant rampaging Smurf named Smurfzilla had almost destroyed the world. Fortunately, scientists in Belgium had found a way to shrink this blue monstrosity back down to smurf size. The world thought that the giant smurf threat was over. They were wrong. You sure wouldn't want to change his diety. Oh no, don't, don't talk about dieties. Don't talk about diapers. Please don't talk about diapers. Please, please, please don't do this. Holo Smurf, be very careful of the chemicals you're smurfing with for that formula. For the last time, Papa Smurf, I know exactly what I'm smurfing, because I have all 550 years worth of your memories. I feel like there's some lore that I'm missing out on here. Uh, maybe the fanfictions will clear that up? Shock me. Make me smurf better. Hey Vic. What the fuck does this mean? Never forget who you are, little star. Smurfing brighter than all the smurfs in the sky. Never forget how to dream, butterfly. Never forget where you smurf from. From love. Okay, but what does this have to do with the big JPEG of a woman behind you? And a bunch of praying CGI smurfs? Even Cheryl Crow doesn't compare to the original Indigo Girl, Smurfette, the Roadside Blues Tour 2000, ready to rock her tail and yours all across America. Hey buddy, how about smurfing me a ride into the next town along the way? Featuring her new hits, My New Favorite Decade, and The Way of the Smurf. So what this picture doesn't show you is how she gets picked up by a serial killer and murdered and then her torso is left on the side of the road for some unsuspecting motorist to find. Wow, this is some vintage 1999 CGI, huh? This image probably took this man like 24 hours to render. <laughs> that is so funny to think about, like this old ass CG stuff. I, I'm pretty sure there weren't even really like free CG programs back in 1998. I don't 
I'm not sure if Blender was around back then. Okay, so Blender was around uh, since 1994. This is kind of wild though. I, I, I feel like it wasn't really a thing that people knew about until years and years later, but in 1998 I was also literally a child, so I didn't know what people were doing on the internet back then. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. This, this one down here in the corner. <laughs> oh man. This guy was truly ahead of his time, wasn't he? Oh hey, he drew something that wasn't a smurf. It looks like trash. You know, I could go for the obvious joke here, but I'm not going to. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, he drew, he drew VeggieTales fan art, but with his Smurf OC. Hmm, this is the good cringy internet vintage that I love. Oh, I... Hmm. Mm. You know, I've been looking for a good tattoo. I think I'm going to bring this in and show it to my tattoo artist and ask what they think. I, I, I think it would make, be great. Don't you think it would look great? This guy can see forever. He's seen all sorts of shit. Oh no, Papa Smurf is dying on top of a CGI pile of poop. Oh, this is the earliest one I've seen. 1995. Wow. Wow. Me obsessed over Smurfette? Well, most certainly, Monami. Okay, I'm glad that you're at least honest about it. I mean, people, people have had weirder waifus. You, you know what? You do you, Vic George. Smurfette isn't real, but I'm sure that she's real in your heart. Smurfette, what's going on? I suddenly Smurf, baby Smurf, and baby Smurfette crying out here. And smurfing, smurf, smurfing, and smurf, 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 smurf. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a smurf. I'm having a smurf stroke. Is this all that I am to use smurfs? Just some statue to be worshipped? Oh, I get it. His self insert is Jesus. His self insert is Jesus come to destroy the Jesus idols that people have made in his image. <laughs> wow, okay. Poor empath! I wish I could be with you in the village right about now. I promise that no matter how long it takes for us to sm- I promise that no matter how long it takes for us to smurf back home. I keep trying to read that correctly, but it's not correct. <laughs> I promise that no matter how long it takes for us for smurf back home, I will never forget about you. And then empath is frozen in a chunk of ice. <laughs> Oh god, you have to do something, Empath, everybody's gonna burn alive! Oh no! Empath, something's wrong with Papa Smurf! Great ancestors, Papa Smurf is more smurfed up than Hefty, and even Neander Smurf at that! I guess the Smurfs aren't the only ones who are gonna be calling him Papa after this. Y you know, because... because... Daddy... because... people like to call older men who they find sexually attractive daddy and I hate it a lot. Oh, I wish I hadn't made that joke. So this is a very weird section to have on your website. This is just a bunch of clip art that he drew of some smurfs uh, with the real life names of I guess people that he knew that are dead now? It's a memorial page for all of these completely random strangers. The poets page. Oh boy, we're gonna get into Vic George's poetry. Do you not understand by Vic George 2000? Do you not understand what I'm trying to say? I tell you my problem as clearly as I possibly can. Yet I might as well be speaking to you in Greek. You say things back that do not say I understand, but rather say these are your problems, not mine. Go carry your cross up the hill of Calvary and come back to me once you hang yourself on it. This is not a poem. It doesn't rhyme. It isn't really attempting to rhyme either. Your empathy, even though you are a brother in Christ, might as well be the same things they spat on Christ. Lord, please forgive them, believers and unbelievers. 
For they know not the things they'd still not know of me. What? Let me not think of them with a hardened heart. But let the hills be leveled and mountains be moved and the light shine through for all to see and let there be no doubt left behind. So unfortunately, I am pretty familiar with the Bible and a lot of that poem is just literally lines from the Bible. Lines that people really like to repeat from the Bible. Very, very original poem you got there, Vic. It wasn't even a fucking poem. Like, dude, come on, just try to rhyme something. Lighten Up by Vic George 2000. How many times do I hear other people say, Lighten up, you're too serious. How many times do I hear them say, I have no sense of humor. How many times do I see their own behaviors, behaving too much like children, forgetting not only the incidents, but also the lessons to be learned from them. How many times do they forget my own laughter, and not realize that they're not always funny, that they wield humor like a sword, and can carelessly cut and wound others. I am watching what I say more than ever, but how is it they can't see this in me? They'd rather me prove them right, those poor souls, that I truly can't laugh at anything, because they can't control their own humor. Put down those swords and see for yourselves, those dying from your razor-sharp comments that you claim to be light as feathers. Hmm. So what's the tea, Vic? Who, who heard you? In the Flesh by Vic George 2000. I look at myself and wonder day by day, who will ever love me in the flesh? I was made for someone out there, but who would ever become one with me? The flesh that has sustained and protected me has now become a curse upon my soul, for its carnal desires demand satisfaction. Is this, is this just a poem about how he hates that he has to jerk off instead of have sex with a real person? I am made wretched in this form, a sheep in wolf's clothing, unworthy, undeserving in the eyes of man, <laughs> loved only through lusting appetites. The world rejects what I want to give because it does not come from them. But God won't allow for flesh to inherit the wonderful kingdom of heaven that Jesus prepared only for the spirit. I am left to wonder what I love more, the boast of fulfilled desire through the flesh or the promise of eternal love through the spirit. But in the meantime, I still wait for the other half, that he might find me in both. Oh, uh, this is a little bit sad. <laughs> I hope that you did eventually find that other half of yourself, Vic George. And I hope that he or she or they is, is very loving and kind to you. I, I really do. <laughs> if only so you won't write things like this anymore. It has been carefully crafted, handmade with love and tempered steel, just like all of my weird little porn drawings of Smurfette. As solid as a rock, as just like, just like my dick when I think of Smurfette. And yet as soft as pure satin, just like Smurfette's boobs when I touch them. I tell her if only you had been there in my life when I was among the living, we would have shared our love together as two that became one flesh. We would have walked upon real beaches and communicated through our hands. We would have rested in the safety of each other's arms in the night time. We would have grown old together and looked back upon memories that grew. She says, I have always been with you, though you have not known it. For he has sent me to protect you from the evils that would have consumed you. I keep your mind pure and clean during times of overbearing passion. How many... How many poems has this guy written about how sad he is that he's horny? I tell her, but is this really heaven? For I will awaken soon and will be alone again. She says, as long as you hold on to his love for you, heaven will always live inside you. Cope, mauled, seethe, loser. Love for the loser. <laughs> An old friend of mine in memory of Carl Beckham we both loved playing Atari. We both hated not going anywhere off grounds. We both lived in group homes. Ugh, that's, that's pretty sad. I think this is getting realer than I thought it would be. We both liked Twisted Sister, right after saying that you were both in group homes. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so long. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be reading all of this. I'm going to be searching through it for interesting parts. So uh, 
don't don't expect like a comprehensive thing. I I don't want to spend the next ten hours reading through the lore for Empath, the luckiest Smurf. Empath, the main character of his fanfiction stories, the biological son of Papa Smurf. Uh, okay. Given the title of the luckiest Smurf by his fellow Smurfs due to his abilities, Smurfette. Gargamel's magically created female smurf turned real smurf has a romantic interest in empath. Oh, I know. I know all about Smurfette's romantic interest in empath. I know all about that. Polaris Psyche, empath's friend from Psychelia, who has the same powers empath has. Psyche Master, the omniscient leader of Psychelia, where Polaris Psyche comes from and where Empath lived most of his first 150 years of living. Okay, so it's been a long time since I've watched the Smurfs. Actually, I'm not sure that I ever watched the Smurfs. Traveler, Empath's great-grandson from the future who is a time traveler. Okay, why not? Why not? Also related to Smurfette and Polaris Psyche. Oh, oh, I wonder how. I wonder how he could possibly be related to Smurfette. Lilithina, the wife of Papa Smurf and mother to both Empath and Brainy. The latter through her fellow Smurf Aristotle. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's hold up for a second. <laughs> Is there like Smurf affairs going on? What? Greedy, the village cook who really enjoys food, deals with his brother Nabby who likes to steal food from his kitchen. Nabby? Is that, is that a real smurf? Is that a real smurf? That can't possibly be a real smurf, right? So he's straight up just a smurf who is a thief? And that's his whole thing? The village narcissist has a twin brother named Sentry. Why, why are there scare quotes around the twin brother? Refugees from Smurfling Island who settled in the Smurf Village in order to become adult Smurfs, collectively calling themselves the Smurflings. Nat loves to protect nature, Snappy is rather impulsive, and Slouchy is just laid back. Okay, is Smurfling Island a real thing? Is it a real thing? No, the only results for Smurfling Island are on the Smurfs fanon wiki. I'm sorry? There is a Smurf span in wiki? So there's, there's no way that this whole wiki isn't just written by the same guy, right? Like this, this has to be only Vic George writing these things, right? I, I can't imagine that there would be any other ex explanation for this. Popular pages <laughs> reproduction, okay. Shit, I knocked over my microphone because I was so, I was so distressed. I was so distressed by reproduction being the most popular page on the Smurf Spanish wiki. Oh my god. Why? Why is it the most popular? Okay, the episode is about this now. The, the video is about this. The video is about this now. You know, this also exists in the real world as well. You don't say, you don't say that reproduction the act of reproduction exists in the real world you may want to be careful with this subject my little smurfs this article or section features information that may be considered not suitable for younger audiences or controversial in nature if you are a parent make sure that your children do not read this without your discretion and then they have a section for mainstream smurfs media which is only like two paragraphs because they don't really reproduce in the Smurfs, I guess. And then there's several sections where they go over the different headcanons for reproduction that people have in their different fan fictions. Smurfs, empath stories, physiology. Why, why did you put a diagram of sexual organs over these drawings of Smurfs that you did? Why do you need to be that thorough in your fanfiction for children? 
Oh, popular page is Black Smurf. I'm sorry. What? A Black Smurf is a character that originally appeared in the European Smurf comic book story, The Black Smurfs, which later became The Purple Smurfs when it was adapted to English. Uh, of course it did, because what the fuck? It is probably due to the nature of the characters that the Black Smurfs were made purple for this racially cautious English-speaking audience, both for the cartoon show episode and for the English translation of the original story. I can't believe they had to add like a trivia blurb for that. Like, did that not go without saying? Oh my god, this is so dense. There's, there's 18 chapters of this. I'm not, I'm not reading this. I'm not reading this. I'm sorry. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> You're all just going to have to deal with not knowing the origins of Empath, the luckiest Smurf. I know, it's heart-wrenching, isn't it, that you'll never know <laughs> about Empath. I dream of Smurfette. Warning, may contain some adult subject material. Okay, let's see what that is. Of course, when he did wake up that morning, he felt like he had to wash himself. He, wa he went over to the pump to draw out some water and gave himself a bath. He felt something, he felt somewhat unclean as if something happened to him that he didn't want to happen. He never had that kind of feeling before. The feeling of something pleasurable that happened to him when he was asleep. What? Excuse me? He remembered dreaming about Smurfette and it was the most intense dream of her he had ever had. <laughs> Did he just- he had a wet dream about the Smurf? He just never thought that a dream like that would make him respond in such a way that made him feel embarrassed about himself. It made him think of all the things the Psyche Master said about Smurfs being savage creatures with no control over their passions and desires. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what are you- what are you saying? It was disturbing for Empath to think that he was just living up to every single thing that he was trained in Psychelia to hate about Smurfs. You know, I think that this might actually be better that I've jumped into the middle of like a random story without any context for what is going on or who these characters are. <laughs> because holy shit, that is so much to unpack. He decided to deal with this mess later as he stepped out to get the daily newspaper. Oh no, you shouldn't do that, or else it'll crest over and be really annoying to get out of your sheets. How was your, uh, resting period? What kind of euphemism is that? It was nice and quiet, Empath, though I was thinking about you all last night, Smurfette answered. It must have been that kiss that we smurfed some nights ago, the day we smurfed Gargamel out of the forest. You can't use, you can't use smurfed for both shared, I assume, and also, I don't know, chased out? You, you can't use both of those for different words in the same sentence. You seem to smurf rather nervous about talking of that night. Oh well, it's just a little something that rises. Oh well, it's just a little something that rises. I mean, raises the smurf's interest in you, Smurfette. Empath answered. Frankly, this smurf was also thinking of you last night. That you were part of this smurf's dreams. Why does he keep calling himself this smurf? Really? Smurfette wondered. I hope it's not the same kind of dream that every mur every smurf says they have about me. Yes, it's exactly that kind of dream. Uh, of course not, Smurfette. This smurf would never insert myself into you. I mean, insert you into the smurf streams like that to uh, do anything to you that is uh, of that kind of nature. Okay, I thought they were going to be a little more coy about this, but they're straight up just putting sexual innuendos into this fanfiction. Like... Have a little self-control, man. This is a children's comic from like the 1950s or something. Smurfette looked at Empath rather suspiciously for a moment. You are the new Smurf around here. So I guess if you even smurfed that kind of dream, I would just think it would be natural for you to smurf it. 
I'm sorry for bothering you about it, empath. I should have known that such things wouldn't be what you would smurf during your time in Psychelia. That's how it is in Psychelia, Smurfette. Empath said, we've trained to have our thoughts free of anything that would be distracting. This smurf was very sexful. I mean, successful at it before returning home for you. Uh, for good. I'll see you later, empath, Smurfette said as she hastily walked off. <laughs> oh, she's shutting you down, dude. She is not interested. Empath let out a huge sigh of relief as talking to Smurfette about the situation without letting her know exactly what it was made him feel rather uncomfortable. She knew exactly what it was, my dude. My brother in Christ. She is... She knows exactly what happened. She knows exactly what you dreamed about. I'm sorry that you had to find out this way. Meanwhile, in Tapper's Tavern, the male Smurfs were enjoying an evening of drinking sa sar sars sarsaparilla ale. That is not how sarsaparilla is spelt. Hey, laddie, have you noticed how everyone in the village seems to be acting lately? Duncan said to Tapper when he was sitting at the counter with his ale. Aye, the presence of a Smurfette seems to have lifted up the spirits among our fellows, Duncan, Tapper said. Even I'm finding myself feeling like it's the first day of spring when a young Smurf's fancy turns to thoughts of love. Everyone here is just smurfing over themselves to be the one who wants to smurf something for Smurfette. Smurf, 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 smurf. There, that's the whole fan fiction. I just said smurf. And, and just imagine that I'm saying smurf 50 more times and that's the entire fan fiction. The end, we're done. So then Papa Smurf gives Hefty Smurf a birds and the bees talk. <sighs> because of course, you have to remember that you're the one who's in control of these desires, Hefty, Papa Smurf said. The urge of wanting to mate is very strong, so you'll have to resolve it within yourself that you won't let these desires smurf control of you if you truly love Smurfette and you don't want to hurt her. <sighs> I understand, Papa Smurf, Hefty said. By the way, that part in the dream where Smurfette and I smurf our hands under each other's hats. What's that all about? That's just a ritual that Smurfs and Smurfettes engage in when they want to smurf close to each other in the manner you have described from your dream, Hefty. Half a Smurf said, a male Smurf's head is extremely sensitive to a female Smurf's touch because it can smurf you to the point of being stimulated physically. <laughs> I hate this! I hate this! Really? Hefty asked. He tried running his hand under his own hat to feel his bald head. Funny, because I don't feel myself getting physically stimulated when I touch it. Oh my god. Papa Smurf chuckled. That's simply how Mother Nature had created you and all male Smurfs, Hefty. It's also the reason that you and the other Smurfs should be careful in how you let Smurfette touch you, because she may not know that it's physically stimulating and even pleasurable to you. <laughs> Why? 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 Wow, that's certainly something I have never expected to find out about, Papa Smurf, Hefty said. I'm sure glad that you know about these things, and that it's just part of me being a male Smurf. That's part of being a Papa Smurf, Hefty, so that when you're old enough to Smurf children of your own, that they will not be ashamed to know that this is part of who and what they are as Smurfs. <sighs> I also pray for Smurfette's purity, Duncan, Tapper said. After all, as she is living with a hundred male Smurfs, she will be dealing with temptation, and I would wish for her to remain pure until her wedding day. Oh, it's super good to know that the fictional characters, the Smurfs, also have to deal with that fucking purity culture bullshit. Hey, Tapper, it's none of your fucking business what Smurfette chooses to do with her own body. She can have sex with as many of these dudes as she wants. Like, who cares? It's none of your fucking business. Fuck you. Fictional character Tapper the Smurf. Oh, certainly, Papa Smurf, Brainy said. I happen to be a firm believer in a healthy and monogamous relationship between a Smurf and a Smurfette. That marriage is a sacred vow between a male and a female that must be honored. What about gay Smurfs? What? Smurfs aren't allowed to be gay? Is that what you're saying, Brainy? Are you saying Smurfs aren't allowed to be gay? 
There's a hundred of you and one woman. What do you expect the rest of these people to do? Are you just not okay with the other male smurfs finding companionship and love with other male smurfs? What's the fucking problem, Brainy? You got a fucking problem? It's about Smurfette, Papa Smurf, Empath said. This Smurf noticed that she seems to be rather irritable as if something is bothering her. But other than sensing something physiological about her, there doesn't seem to be anything that could be causing her to behave like that. Oh, that's just something that is part of Smurfette's nature, Empath, Papa Smurf said. It's something that always happens to female Smurfs every month. So the Smurfs get periods too now. Okay. Okay. I wonder if it's also blue. <laughs> Empath, the luckiest smurf in the smurf of Solomon. My lover is radiant and smurfy. He smurfs out among 10,000. His mouth is sweet. He is altogether lovely. This is my lover and this is my friend, O oh daughters of Jerusalem. There may be 60 queens, 80 concubines, and countless virgins, but you are my perfect dove. There is no one else like you. The young women see you and call you blessed. Loosely adapted from the Song of Solomon in the Holy Bible. Okay, okay. Hey, so my power went out and then I didn't come back to this until like two weeks later. So, uh, where were we? Oh yeah, the Smurf of Solomon. Smurfette was out by the memorial park reading to herself while watching Baby Smurf. Most of the other Smurfs were busy with their own things, so they paid no attention to what Smurfette was doing all by herself. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine, she read aloud. Because of the fragrance of your good ointments, your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore, the virgins love you. Draw me away! Did you expect to see the word virgin in a Smurf fanfiction? Hi there, Smurfette, Sasset said as she came over with her pet frog. I think that there's some lore that I'm missing here. What are you doing today? Oh, I'm just watching over Baby Smurf while reading Tapper's Holy Book, Sasset. Tapper's Holy Book, Sasset said. Is there a story in it that you're reading right now? Uh, why yes, Sasset, there is, Smurfette said. It's such a wonderful story of romance that I can't smurf it down. Gallop and Grasshopper, Smurfette, can you read it to me? Sasset asked, sounding very excited. Huh? Can you? Pretty please? I'm sorry, Sasset, but I'm afraid you're too young for this story. Ah, gee, I'm always too young for things you adults smurf for granted, Sasset said, sounding sad as she walked away with her frog. Enjoy your childhood, Sasset. Enjoy not having to pay bills or cook for yourself or do anything that adults have to do. God, I'm so, I'm so tired. Smurfette sighed as she watched Sasset walk off. She never liked having to send her sister Smurf. Why are there so many S's? I'm so Smurf sister sister Sasset da. There's too many S sounds and it's driving me insane. She never liked having to send her sister Smurf away by things she would rather not share with any other Smurf. But what she was reading in Tapper's holy book sounded too personal and too adult for Sasset's ears to listen to. Yeah, that really ridiculous line about the fragrance of your good ointments. That's way too adult for a little kid, kid smurf. Meanwhile, Empath was visiting Tapper in his distillery as he was brewing a new batch of sarsaparilla ale. Empath noticed that Tapper was singing a different song from what he was used to hearing from the village bartender. Great ancestors, Tapper, you're in a happier mood than this Smurf usually sees you in, Empath commented. The Smurf wonders what's going on with you. Aye, it's one of those days that I Smurf from my prayer and worship sessions that I feel that the Almighty has Smurfed me with his love, Empath. I don't know what Smurf is supposed to mean in this context. And I kind of feel like Smurf in this context, the Almighty has Smurfed me with his love. I kind of feel like that's, um, that can be read in a different way than he probably intended. Tapper said, it's the kind of joy you get that can't be desmurfed in words. You replace the word describe 
with the smurfed. That doesn't even make sense. You actually feel that this almighty expresses his love towards you, Tapper? Empath asked. I already know that he does from the fact that he has smurfed me his son so that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have a turtle life in him, Tapper said. But sometimes I feel that kind of love in a more tangible way as words alone cannot make me feel what he has done for me. This, this reads like one of those really boring animated stories that I had to watch in Sunday school. Um, not VeggieTales. VeggieTales were the good ones. That was a good Sunday school if we got to watch VeggieTales. Uh, I mean the bad ones. So how does this almighty express his love towards you? Empath asked. He speaks to me in his in he speaks to me in my heart, Empath. Things that I need to smurf from him in order to be the kind of smurf that he wants me to be, Tapper said. The more I smurf down my life to become his child, his servant, the more he opens himself up to me and reveals the kind of god he truly is. This almighty seems very intimate in his expression of his love towards you, Tapper, from what this smurf is sensing. <laughs> Empath also gets it. He's, he, he's getting that this is a little sus, right? This is a little sussy. This smurf would never imagine what it would be like for this smurf to solely rely upon this almighty for a loving relationship apart from this smurf's fellow smurfs, Tapper. Why can't you just say I? Why do you need to say this smurf? You can just say I. All I can smurf to you, empath, is that when he is all that is left for you to smurf hold of, he's all that you'll ever need. Okay, here's the part where empath gets jealous of God, I guess? I just wanted to return your holy book to you, Tapper, Smurfette said. The words in it were very inspiring to me. Very inspiring, Tapper said. The words of the Almighty are full of life and spirit, given by the breath of the Almighty himself. This Smurf senses that Smurfette may have been inspired in a very different way, Tapper. Yeah, she totally jacked it to the Bible. <laughs> Empath noted. You wouldn't by any chance want to share with this Smurf what it is from the holy book you have read. Empath, that is a very personal question to ask of anyone who Smurfs from the holy book. Uh, is it? I don't, I don't really think there's anything wrong with asking, hey, what story did you read in the Bible today? <laughs> That's right, Tapper, Smurfette said as she handed the book to Tapper. You should know better than to ask me about things that are very personal. Like, which story I read in one of the world's oldest books and one of the most common books that you will ever find. Well, since this Smurf can't pry the information out of you, Smurfette, then this smurf will not pursue it any further, Empath said. This smurf only hopes that you have enjoyed what it was you were reading. I'm sure that you can figure it out for yourself, Empath. <laughs> wow, that's so passive-aggressive, <laughs> Smurfette said. Anyway, I've got things to smurf with baby smurf now. I'll smurf you later. I'm getting real sick of this. Smurf this, smurf that shit. But I guess, I guess they have to remind us that these characters are smurfs all the time. Otherwise, what's even the point of writing a story, am I right? Empath and Tapper watch Smurfette leave the tavern. I'm very ashamed of you, Empath, that you would stoop to smurfing like nosy and smurfing about things that are none of your smurfness. Really? Really? Smurfness instead of business? Like, I could understand replacing, like, verbs with smurf. That's, that's basically what they always did. But you need to replace the word business with smurfness that that just makes it not not mean the same thing it means something totally different now this smurf's job as the assistant counselor i didn't i didn't know that smurfs needed therapists is to have smurfs reveal things about themselves in private sessions that they don't want others to know about and to keep their issues with confidentiality Unless it warrants having to tell Papa Smurf about them, Tapper. Okay, that's... that's pretty vague. That's a little bit vague, don't you think, Empath? What, what counts as warranting uh, needing to take it to Papa Smurf? Are, are you a snitch, Empath? Because you know that snitches get stitches, right? But what this Smurf was sensing from Smurfette was some sort of intimate pleasure coming from somewhere other than this Smurf. Oh, the subtext is 
Not even subtext. Oh my gosh. Intimate pleasure from the Bible. <laughs> so why not just let the matter pass, empath? Because it's real weird to be jacking it to the Bible, my guy. It's hard for this smurf to let the matter pass when this smurf is so curious about what makes you so enamored about this almighty that the holy book even talks about, Tapper. That is a hell of a sentence. Empath said, there's something she read in that book that makes this smurf curious as to her behavior. I would suggest that the only way for you to find out what it is that has smurfed her interest is for you to read the holy book yourself. The smurf has read the holy book enough times already, Tapper. So wait, Empath has already read the Bible. So he should know. He should know, like... Oh, I guess, I guess a certain story must have really uh, connected with her or something. Like, I don't think you need to know which specific story it is. It's weird. It's, it's weird to be all hung up about this. Empath said, why would this smurf need to read it now? It's just what I'm smurfing in my spirit about what Smurfette wants you to find out, Empath, Tapper said, handing the book to Empath. And so Empath spent the night in his bedroom reading through the holy book again. As Empath read every word, verse, and chapter, he felt drawn to skip through the books that were in the book when he came across the name of King Solomon. He knew that he was one of the authors who was responsible for writing Proverbs and Ecclesiastes because of the wisdom that the Almighty had blessed him with. But there was something more about Solomon that he needed to find out about. Yeah, he, he summoned the 72 demon pillars and started the incineration of humanity. And, and spoiler, spoiler alert, he was actually the doctor the whole time. It was through his reading that he found one of the books that was called The Song of Solomon. He read it one time and found it to be the most explicit form of love poetry ever written by anyone. The most explicit form of love poetry ever written by anyone. I feel like Vic George hasn't really been on the internet very long, which is weird because he does have this absolutely buck, buck fucking wild website. Even more so than anything Poet Smurf himself would write about Smurfette. Then as Empath read through the book, he realized that this must have been the book Smurfette was drawn to reading. She must have pictured herself as being the Shalomite woman whom her beloved King Solomon was after and that she herself had desired. He felt like he had to talk to Smurfette personally about this. Do you? Do you really? So then Empath like describes the story of King Solomon to some other Smurf. It would seem that the power this human has accumulated from this almighty has corrupted him, Polaris said. That would be this smurf's assessment of what this smurf read from the holy book, Polaris, Empath said. Tapper believes that the almighty has made man and woman to be monogamous, so that they would learn fidelity not only to each other but also to the almighty, and that polygamy is one of man's attempts to be like the almighty, to have power over so many women. I didn't know that the reason that people want to have sex with a lot of people is because they want to be God. I guess the more sex you have, and the more slutty you are, the more godly you are, which actually sounds like a great thing. That sounds awesome, actually. It is oddly fascinating to discover that savage beings like humans could use physical intimacy as a means for accumulating and controlling other people, Polaris commented. Hearing about things like this makes this smurf skin crawl, Polaris, Empath said. Tapper himself is appalled to find that even noble kings like David would stoop to having harems that the Almighty had warned his people about. Project much? Project much, Vic George? Project your personal opinions about polygamy onto these children's characters from a book from like the 60s? So why would Smurfette be drawn to this king whose heart isn't steadfast upon a single mate? Polaris asked. This smurf really doesn't know, Polaris. It's something this smurf hopes to ask her in private. Yeah, well, don't think you will catch me smurfing from that book, Tapper. Hefty said, I think the whole thing is a bunch of made-up stories just to control people's minds. Wow, Hefty must be the smartest smurf in the village. Let's look up what Hefty looks like. Hefty smurf, there he is. There's Hefty. Hefty is considered the strongest and bravest smurf of all, who's willing to use his strength to help out his fellow smurfs. Based atheist Hefty smurf. <laughs> 
The stories in the holy book are not all made up, Hefty. Every single word smurfs from the Almighty himself, just the way he wants it to be smurfed, Tapper said. And those stories are not smurfed to control people's minds, but to educate them. To make them aware of someone much greater than themselves, or even any of the gods that smurf in this world or beyond it. Wait. Wait. If we're talking about the Christian god, then why are they making concessions that there might be multiple gods? Any, like, any of the gods implies that there are multiple gods, so... The theology here is a little weird. I don't need someone much greater to control how I choose to smurf my life, Tapper, Hefty said. Hefty! 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 We stand Hefty! We stand a himbo atheist! You wouldn't even have a life if there wasn't someone much greater to smurf it into existence, my fellow Hefty, Tapper said. I know who smurfed me into this life, Tapper. My own papa and mama smurf, Hefty said. Your parents only smurfed the necessary components for smurfing a new life, the egg and the seed. <laughs> but only the Almighty can unite them together and make a living from being from that. Well, thanks for the biology lesson, Tapper. I still don't buy that this Almighty is responsible for me being smurfed into existence, Hefty said, taking another sip of his juice. I will not stop praying for you, Hefty, Tapper said. You're a good smurf despite all your faults, and I would hate to see you perish along with the rest of the world. Shut the fuck up, Tapper. <laughs> one, of those, one of those things that bothers the hell out of me is the people who are like, I'll never stop praying for you. And it's like, okay. Okay, so I guess you really do believe that I'm going to go to hell when I die. That I'm really going to burn in all eternity, no matter how good of a person I am. I guess that's the type of theology that you really want to believe in, because you want to think that you're better than me. Okay. And then Empath and Smurfette, like, roleplay as King Solomon? And, uh, I guess, I guess, uh, the, the lady, I don't remember her name, the, the one who, like, tempts King Solomon or whatever. Oh, and then... And then they just literally act out the entire story of the Song of Solomon. <laughs> I see that he's been smurfing after your heart as well, empath, Tapper said. The one good thing about having the Almighty as part of your love triangle is that he wants to be part of your relationship together as well as him. Literally the meme that goes, I consent, I consent, I don't. Didn't you forget to ask someone? <laughs> That's literally, literally just the meme. As the writer of Ecclesiastes has eloquently smurfed it, if one overpowers him, two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And you're smurfing that the Almighty is part of this threefold cord in our relationship together, Tapper? Am I right? You are indeed, Smurfette, my dear Smurfette. The Almighty wants us to be happy in our relationships with people, blah, 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 blah. You still think that this smurf is truly Solomon, Empath asked. I think that you may be better than him, Empath, Smurfette said. Who needs a grand palace and a lifetime with a king when all I need is you by my side? And your beloved, Smurfette? Empath asked. Yes, even the beloved, Smurfette said as they walked out together. What a happy ending. Implying that the guy's self-insert smurf is like... The reincarnation of Solomon or some shit. I cannot believe how many of these fan fictions this guy has written. They're all like six pages long. This guy has probably written a whole novel's worth of content for his Smurf fan fiction. Holy shit. Holy shit. Her holy, holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Smurf behind. The departure. Oh my god, is this a Left Behind parody? <laughs> Oh my god, it's a comic! Holy shit! Not like we ever really need him for smurfing jobs like this. But smurfs! Really? Really? You had to replace besides with besmurfs? It's a monster! Run for your smurfs! You bunch of scaredy smurfs. That's no monster. That's one of them dino smurfs that Grandpa Smurf had smurfed us about. That's a dinosaur? No, he said dinosmurf right in the last panel. He already said it was a dinosmurf. Why are you using the real term for it? 
Salutations, Papa Smurf, Grandpa Smurf, and Nanny Smurf. Observing the birthday party preparations that are in progress. Just smurfing about old times, Polaris. By the way, the beard smurfs very well on you. Though you might make your fellow smurfs feel jealous. What? And, uh, why? Why is he a human? <laughs> why is a very small human here? And they're calling him a smurf even though he's clearly a human? Smurf what you will, Polaris. I think you smurf dashingly handsome in a Don Smurfo sort of way with that beard and mustache. And it's smurftenly. I'm going to start keeping a list. I'm going to start keeping a list of the smurf replacement words that most offend me. And smurftenly is at the top of it. And it smurftenly makes you smurf wise beyond your years. But don't tell Brainy I smurfed you that. He 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 he. Right now, I want to smurf my time smurfing to know a smurf who's been smurfing his whole life apart from his fellow smurfs. Really? Really? You had to write that down and you didn't think even once that that sentence was unbelievably terrible. Yahoo! Giddy up, crinkles! Uh, this is a really good picture. He, he figured out the motion blur tool on Photoshop, you guys. Happy 155th Smurf Day, empath. Oh, you can tell, you can tell where he took this actual screenshot from like the cartoon and just edited over the pattern that was on this uh, to put his Smurf's name there. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty great. I, I like that. Oh no, oh no, there's a dinosaur coming. Oh no, oh no, he crashed through the wall. Ah, there's cake everywhere. Oh, the Smurf manity. So it's weird that this human guy is here in this Smurfs fan fiction, but at least uh, he makes it really easy to tell which pages I should skip because um, the ones that he's in are really wordy and don't contribute anything to the story. So I can just like scroll past them. Oh, oh, there's another, another Smurf OC. He's a time traveler. He's a time traveling Smurf OC. Well, it's about time. Traveler, you know about the dino Smurf we found and that he needs to Smurf back to his own time. This one is aware of your situation, Papa Smurf, but as much as this one wants to help you, this one will not be able to deliver him back to his own place in time by my own power. Oh no! You can't, but what about the time you transmurfed Empath back into the past to stop Gargamel from preventing his birth? Hey Vic! What the fuck does that mean? What kind of lore have you written for this? And if they think they can escape by going from one time period to another, they will find nothing but trouble from my minions of evil. Versions of Gargamel, culled from various timelines along history's path. Plus, others call to do my evil bidding to the Smurfs. And then, and then there's just a bunch of MS Paint traces of Gargamel in different stereotypical racist caricature garb. I bet you didn't expect to see a panel that looked like this in a Smurf fanfiction. I hate being Smurfed into vortices! <laughs> Instead of I hate Monday's shirts, they should do I hate being smurfed into vortices and just put this panel on a t-shirt without context. I think that would be pretty swell. The pull of the vortex, it's draining this one's power. Polaris, I can't smurf on much longer. Please hold on for empath's sake. Polaris, I'm slipping. Smurf at Polaris. And now they're in rainbow hell swirling about in a vortex ready to get spat out into the mouth of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. If only you knew the power of the dark side. Augie Ben Doggy never smurfed you what really happened to your father. He smurfed me the truth. He smurfed me that you killed him, Darth Smurfer. No, Luke, I am your father. Really, you couldn't come up with a smurf pun for Luke. Oh my god. Uh, so... Empath had like a vision of everyone getting sucked into the portal and now he is flying away and he wrote like four paragraphs of dialogue in Empath's head about the smurf, the smurf vortex and I can't, I can't be asked to read all that. I am not 
going to read all that. Oh boy, now both of the characters who talk too much and whose dialogue I can skip are on the same page. Wow, it's great. And now, even though all of his friends are gone and probably dead in some past hellscape where velociraptors and stuff are running around and could easily, like, chomp them all in half, he's just, uh, he's just making some pancakes. Making some Smurf pancakes. Water, flour, eggs, baking soda, baking powder, sunflower oil, cinnamon, and a good handful of fresh Smurf berries for a batch of pancakes. Okay. Honestly, that sounds kind of good. I, I don't think I've ever heard of a pancake recipe that has cinnamon in it, but that sounds really good, honestly. You're my Smurf Berry Pancake Girl. Your... Your wife is dead. Into the mouth and through the gums. Look out, stomach, because here it comes. Once again, your wife is fucking dead. Okay, stomach ready for round two. Here comes another juicy bite of pancake. Are you not concerned at all about your dead wife? Oh no, and now Empath is having a dream about his dead wife and how he will never kiss her again. And a single tear trickles down his MS Paint cheek. To be continued. Parentheses, hopefully. God, I hope not. So what did that have to do with Left Behind? Oh no, we're back to just words. Damn it. Yeah, I'm not reading any more of that. I don't, I don't care. I guess the Smurfs are going to be trapped in the past forever. Oh, 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 here's a good one. Here's a good one. Empath, the luckiest Smurf, Smurfed behind the passion of the Smurfs. What was the point of us being Smurfed to this time and place just to watch this man die? This good man that Papa Smurf's power couldn't smurf him from this horrible fate. It is through this one man's death, Grandpa Smurf, that he now has power greater than Papa Smurf's or empaths. The power over death and hell. He came to smurf this for all creation, including us. Because none of us are truly good enough to smurf heaven. Adapted from the gospel accounts of Jesus from the Holy Bible. The Smurfs see Jesus die. They watched while hiding in the grass and saw a group of humans walking together, all of them wearing robes and cloaks and sandals. One of them was a bearded man that seemed to be someone that Tapper recognized. Great Smurf and he crickets, it's him! The Almighty's son, he called out to his fellow Smurfs. He looks way less white than I expected. Suddenly they could hear Puppy growl. What is it, Puppy? Nat asked. Hey, Smurf out one of those men who is in that group and tell me who he doesn't remind you of, Tuffy pointed out. As he saw a familiar face in the crowd with the Almighty's son, the Smurfs looked at the man Tuffy was pointing to, walking with a cat, and were surprised by his very appearance. Just what we need, another human possibly related to Gargavel, Hefty said. I have a feeling that this... I have a feeling that this man who smurfs like Gargamel might be Judas Iscariot. So Gargamel's ancestor was Judas. Like the biblical Judas who betrayed Jesus. <laughs> okay. Okay, Vic. Sure. Gosh, are we really going to see this messiah again? Clumsy asked, sounding curious. I hate seeing the messiah again, Grouchy said. Same, Grouchy. Same. And then the rest of this is just literally the story of Jesus Christ. Just just told with Smurf characters hiding in the bushes, basically. He must truly have the spirit of the McSmurf in him if death couldn't Smurf its hold on him, laddie, Duncan said. I hate death Smurfing a hold on me, Grouchy said. Same, Grouchy. Same. Boy, what a crummy ripoff of having to smurf here for our Easter instead of back home where we could see Smurfette in a bunny suit, Snappy said. Priorities, Snappy. You just watched a man die on a cross. Okay, that's that's enough fanfiction for me. I think I think I'm done with the fanfiction. I can't I can't I can't go through all of these. Like you guys don't expect that of me, right? I, I, I barely made it through that other one that was way worse. And I can't, I can't go through more of this. I really cannot. He's got a video game tab where he tells you about all the systems he's owned because we totally care about that. 
GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Switch, Xbox 360. Okay, so the Switch is listed here, which means that this website has been updated within the past, like, five years or so. So, that's, that's pretty wild. Personal computers. And then he just, various Windows compatible PC configurations. We don't care. Why, why does he think that we care? This guy, this guy just writes like five paragraph essays about video games. And it's about like old shit too that nobody talks about anymore. Like the case for backwards compatible game systems. Nobody talks about that anymore because most games are digital now. And uh, you can just download them and they're usually like ported to the PC or something or on an emulator or whatever. Unless they're a Nintendo game, in which case you're fucked. Three great movies about video games. Okay, which ones are we talking about? Tron. Sure. I mean, sure, there's been Tron video games. The controversial issue of female gamers. Oh yes, please tell me about the controversial issues of female gamers, Vic George. Some games were even designed by women. Holy shit, video games designed by women? What will they think of next? Unfortunately, like the women's movement and their efforts to get the Equal Rights Amendment passed in the 1980s, the revolution to get females making and playing video games was short-lived as the games themselves required more people to design them and more complex thinking in order to play them? What? What? What are you talking about? What the fuck? I mean, the most, the most popular video game in the world is Tetris, right? And that is like super popular with women. And it's probably as simple as a game can get besides, like, Pong. <laughs> to get this out of the way, boys and men shouldn't feel defensive about girls and women wanting to play video games. Yes, true, there's no rule that states that video gaming is strictly male territory. Even if most games seem to be designed mostly with its core audience, young teenage boys in mind, females seeking vicarious thrills by taking on roles of mostly male characters shouldn't feel intimidated by doing so. Besides wanting to see Laura Croft in less clothing, why do most boys take on the role of a female lead in Tomb Raider? Well, that's kind of a stretch right there, since most boys don't seem interested in imagining themselves as females. Personally, I think any male who feels threatened by a female wanting to play video games is a total wimp. Good. Good. At least you're right about that, Vic George. John Elefante. John Elefante again. Robin Mark. Robin Mark again. Robin Mark for a third time. And all of them are about, like, Ireland, I guess. There's a lot of, uh, worship songs. Oh, Left Behind, the movie soundtrack. Wait, there was a, there was a Left Behind movie? Budget, four million dollars. Oh man, remember, remember when movies used to be considered expensive if they, they were made with more than a million dollars? Box office returns were 4.2 million. The film went on to gross a total of four million dollars, barely pa surpassing its budget. Yeah. The film has a 16% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Holy shit. A critical consensus of poor production values, slow pacing, and an implausible story makes Left Behind a movie only for the faithful. Man, somebody really needs to make like some good media for the Christians so they can stop pretending that they're oppressed. Michael W. Smith. Worship. Michael W. Smith again. Worship again. My links. Okay, let's see where Vic George wants us to go. Let's see what websites he has linked to. Adventures in Odyssey. Oh, I remember that. I remember this stupid fucking radio show. Featured content. Refugees on the run. Okay. Okay. Let's see what this thing is saying. Cousins Beth and Patrick have a problem. They need to leave the country of Lithuania before the Nazis arrive. But their friend Lisa and her family are in worse trouble. They are Jews and Nazis don't like the Jews. Understatement of the fucking century. They must find a way to become Nazi prisoners. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. They must find a way to become Nazi prisoners. For, for why? So that they can rescue Lisa? Is, is re this really the, the plan that they're going with? They're going to infiltrate the Nazi concentration camps as prisoners to save their friend? 
instead of, I don't know, helping her also flee the country. That, that seems like a much better plan. Setting like an adventure story about kids fighting oppression in a Nazi concentration camp is a choice. It's definitely a choice. Okay, so this, this book series is weird because they have a bunch of books set in like historical time. They have one where they help kids escape from slavery and another one where they help kids escape from slavery. Uh, and then they have this one where it, the only description is Beth goes to see a South American missionary and it looks like fucking Tarzan. And look, some are actual historical events like Doomsday in Pompeii, surprise at Yorktown, the Redcoats are coming. And then, and then they have like Hunt for the Devil's Dragon where they, where they see a man slay an actual dragon. Battle for Cannibal Island, the cousins visit a mysterious island in the South Pacific. Did you make up an island of cannibals? <laughs> and then, and that's right, that's like two books away from Problems in Plymouth. Make up your mind. Are you gonna do like crazy imaginary stories or are you gonna do historical stories? Christian Answers. Latest movie. They reviewed the Bob's Burgers movie. Let's see. Let's see what they have to say about the Bob's Burgers movie. It is three and a half stars. Moral rating average somewhat offensive. And then you get to this part. The soul of this film is certainly the Belcher's family dynamic. Despite their differences, their love for one another is undeniable. There is no evidence that the Belchers are Christ followers, but the characters still possess certain characteristics encouraged in the scriptures. Yeah, that's what I think when I think of the Belchers from Bob's Burgers. I think of Christ followers. <laughs> Linda definitely marches for abortion and brings everyone else. Louise is probably going to be a lesbian. Uh, Tina is probably going to have a lot of premarital sex. I stand the Belchers and they are godless heathens. Though the overall message of the Bob's Burgers movie is positive and supports family values, it still comes from a secular perspective. As a result, the film has some material that will be objectionable to certain audiences. The main characters are often frazzled and frequently take the Lord's name in vain by saying, Oh my God, 13, or Oh God, 11. They counted how many over Oh my Gods and Oh Gods were in the movie. There are multiple vulgar terms like my penis area, grab your meat, you gotta punch him in the nuts, A star star, get your head out of your boobs, fart, D star M-A-N, CR star P, CR star PPY, H star LL. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you censoring hell? Don't. Isn't that all you guys ever fucking talk about? There is some mild sexual content. The eldest daughter, Tina, is in her early teenage years and she is struggling with puberty and her new attraction to boys, specifically her classmate, Jimmy Jr. She is very attracted to his butt and imagines him in his underpants a couple times. She also imagines sexy zombies, which is a reference to earlier episodes. Linda wears a burger costume, puts a bikini over it, and a character says, Sex sells, baby! And there is a statue that opens a secret door when the nipples are turned. <laughs> I think I need to watch the Bob's Burgers movie. I, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Since there is a murder mystery aspect of the plot, there are also a couple scenes that may be scary to young audience members. A skeleton falls on Louise! Profane language, moderately heavy. Vulgar crude language, moderate. Violence, mild, sex, mild, nudity, minor, drugs, alcohol, minor. Occult, none. All right, I have to find hereditary. Hereditary, extremely offensive, but they gave it four stars. Despite its quality, I strongly rep recommend that Christians skip this film. Uh, fanfiction.net! You're linking fanfiction.net on your website. I'm sure they really need the traffic from you, Vic George. Arrowid. What is Arrowid? Documenting the complex relationships between humans and psychoactives. <laughs> okay. Plants and drugs. 
Oh, so this is like a legit place where you can like find out about the different drugs you want to try and they probably ha actually they probably have some good information here like on what is safe and how you should uh, take whatever. Well, that, that's kind of a good thing actually. This is kind of a good website. All right. That's going to be the last of vicgeorge419.net. Oh, this this certainly is a website. Okay, I I honestly kind of love websites like this. They feel like such a throwback to um, just an earlier time in the internet's history. You didn't have all these centralized social media frickin' websites like Facebook or whatever. I, you didn't have to go on Twitter. You didn't have to uh, hang out on Facebook or Tumblr or whatever other hell place that you... That is your social media of choice. So the best way to keep in contact with your friends was to watch their website and uh, update your own website. I think that a lot of you who are watching this probably weren't around for that time, but I was a teenager in like the early 2000s. I remember that era very, very well. I remember the gradual rise of social media and how it ruined absolutely everything about the internet. So when I stumble across a thing like this, where it's just some dude who has had this website since like 2001, and he's just been updating it since then, Sometimes with websites like these, they have like a little thing at the bottom that shows you the date that it was last updated. This one doesn't have any of that. It doesn't have any information at the bottom, actually. I guess because it's laid out so weirdly. Like this website is a mess. But it's cute little quirks like that that kind of give it its charm. I wish that this was more of a thing now. Um, I guess it kind of had a revival with like Tumblr blogs and how you could customize them. There's just nothing like a website some guy coded in HTML in like 2000 and it's completely absurd and broken and doesn't make any sense and it's decorated horribly. Like I hate this background. It's so ugly. <laughs> this background is... what? Why would you make that choice? There's all these like other clashing backgrounds within backgrounds. All the graphics are like different. Like this has a Smurfs background and this has a weird V pattern background and this one is like a left behind background and this one has a music background like he went he went crazy I like all these amateur web designers and how they just went absolutely bonkers batshit insane and they would just put whatever on their website with no regard for how it looked if they liked a graphic they would just put it there and that's how you get like spinning angel gifs and stuff like that even though it's much easier to make like a good website now, that means that ugly, horrible websites like this are kind of a rare find. And I am very, very glad that I learned about this one because this is like so wholesome. I, it's such a nice change from that horrible, horrible story that I read. Like if this is just some guy who really wants to smooch Smurfette and be her Christian husband. All he wants is for his self-insert to be married to Smurfette and for them to go to church every Sunday. Judging by the ages of the consoles that he talked about in the video games, um, I am guessing that this man is probably in like his 40s, maybe early 50s, which is wild. That is insane. Can you imagine like your dad owning a website like this and updating it. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, one of these days I'm gonna have kids and they're gonna find my Tumblr blog or something. No, no, what they're gonna do is they're gonna find this cringy ass YouTube channel where I pretend to be an anime girl and read Smurfs fanfiction for people on the internet. <laughs> this was a much welcome departure from the Blue Moon Nursery. I mean, I can't believe it's been like over a year since I made that video because it ruined my life so hard that I feel like it constantly happened yesterday and I have to flash back to the memory of like baby Snickers' body. <laughs> so I'm very glad that there was no weird snuff torture porn on Vic George's website. I'm glad that it was just your average cringe shit. So that's gonna be it for this video. I'm sorry that I've been gone for so long. I've been busy, and by been busy, I mean 
I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV, and I have not stopped. And uh, that's just what I do in my evenings now. I don't really get a lot of time to uh, record. I'm, I'm doing my best, you know. I started freelancing as an illustrator. I, I'll, I'll leave links to like my main art channels um, down in the description. There's like my Twitter, uh, and there's there's info about commissioning me if you're interested. I really need money. Please, please commission me. <laughs> anyway, e-begging over. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, throw it a like. Throw it a subscribe if you like my cringy, stupid bullshit. Next video I'm going to do about bad creepypastas, I think. I have a bunch of links saved in a notepad of creepypastas that I found that are just, just the worst. Like, they're not, they're not even the scary ones. They're just, like, ten-year-olds trying to be scary. And some of them are trying really hard, and it's kind of endearing, but they're not good at it. Manhook hand car door? And then a skeleton popped out. But it was fun. Anyway, look forward to that. Uh, unless it takes me another year to make another one of these videos. Who knows? I hope not. I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I really am. Okay, that's gonna be the end of the video. See you guys later. Bye!